gonna get an infection. Some of us went with the right intention, but because we had the wrong application, and then we infected the person, and then that we went to heal. So Jesus, amen, knew that he had to do this by himself. He could not bring any crowd, but he had to go by himself. And while he went there, let me slow down for a little bit. I believe grandmother is here. Amen, God bless you, grandma. Hallelujah. But I tell you this, while they were gone, Jesus had the opportunity yes. to have a one-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. Yes. Hallelujah. And that is what is important. He had a one-on-one -on -one with her. Yes. And if you allow me to walk you through this, is that Jesus knew her past. Yes. The thing is that when some folks come to minister to us, there's a saying that don't keep me while I'm down. Some of us, we don't mean any harm, yes. but because our daddy beat me up, up over my head when I was down, some of us have the same mentality, amen, to beat me over my head. But, but, but there's a saying that you catch more, amen, fly or whatever it is, amen, with honey than you do with vinegar. You got to look at the things that work, and if it work, then you apply it. Some tradition have steered us the wrong way. We don't want to admit it, but let me speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Jesus went to her. He know, amen, that she was guilty. He know that she was a mess. But look what he did. He did not approach her with the mess and throw it in her face. The first thing he did, amen, that he made a conversation with her. He said, give me to drink. And look what he did. He gave her the power. He put her in a position to have the power. Because now, amen, she's doing him a favor. Give me to drink. You came here and you have what it takes to pull the water. So he said, give me to drink. We got to learn how to break the ice. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to know how to break the ice. You can't just say you're baptized. Give your life. You got to know how to approach. Some folks will run away and they will not come back. You got to get your word together. He did not give her vinegar, but he came and he brought some sweetness and he said, why don't you give me something to drink? He gave her the power, put her in a position to have the power. And the woman, you, let me back up a little bit further. And some of us are no different from this woman. If you can't say amen, you can say ouch. I said, let me speak about me. Some of us, amen, is no different from this woman. But yet we want to throw stones. Salvation, amen, did not came, amen, for, for the cats and the dogs and the pigs. Salvation came for Craig King. Because I was a wretch. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shores. And salvation came for me. I was a sinner. I was wretched. And Jesus came looking for Craig King. He came to save me. I said 50 more minutes, give me 10 more minutes. Look at this. The woman came there and she came there at a strategic time. She came there, amen, to avoid the other women. She came there, amen, at an unusual time. 
she came there when the sun was hot. We're talking about him in the Middle East. Him in what is hot. And who want to aim and go draw water? Amen. At 12 noon. 12 noon is when the sun is hot. So 12 noon is when the sun is right. Everyone want to stay indoor at 12 noon. Amen. They didn't have AC, but maybe they had some chip ice in a cup. And the same water they got from the well, they were cooling and drinking it. But she went out at 12 noon. Some of us go out of our way to avoid some folks. Just for the mere fact, amen, that we have a questionable character. Yes, this woman had a questionable character. It was given. And she went at an unusual time to get water. Why is that? It was a society that forces her to do such. So she went there at an unusual time, a time when the sun was hot. But I come to let you know, it doesn't matter how you try to hide. God is going to find you somehow and somewhere. When you think, amen, that you're just going, amen, just to draw your water. And this is what I love. She went there. To see no one. She went there, amen, and she was suffering. Day in and day out, she had to be suffering. I, I'm sure she didn't have an umbrella. And even if she had an umbrella, she couldn't carry her water with any umbrella. So I'm sure, amen, she was hot. I'm sure day in and day out, the sun scorched her. But she had to do what she had to do, like some of us. And went there at a season to see no one. But lo to your surprise, I want you to know that we are doing some stuff. Amen. Our past is questionable. People have our past. Amen. And just won't let go to it. But I come to let you know that Jesus Christ is going to come look for you at the well. Your well, amen, doesn't have to be, amen, in your bathroom. Your well doesn't have to be at the well. Your well doesn't have to be, amen, at church. Your well doesn't have to be at work. Amen. Your well, amen, is a place where God is going to meet you, amen, when you least expect it. Ah, your well is where God is going to meet you when all folks gave up on you, amen, because they chastise you, uh, they talk about you, they walk up on you like a carpet. But I come to let you know, even in the midst of your basement, could be your well, and Jesus is going to come to your well. He's going to get, amen, in your pit, and he's going to come to minister just for you and to you. Touch your neighbor and say, he came looking for me. Touch someone else and say, he came looking for me. He came and he ministered to her. And I'm sure she thought at first he was an ordinary man. And we can take this story from so many handles because, amen, her past, amen, spoke who she was, who she is, but it doesn't necessarily dictate who, amen, she's going to be. And that is where we get in trouble, that we want to look at people past, look at where they are now. But I come to tell you this, amen, God and Jesus love stuff that people throw away. When you eat your food and you leave the crumbs and uh, you think it's just bone that's no good, that's the stuff that Jesus wants. That's the stuff that God wants. He will go in the garbage and yes, it was some of us. Some of us were like dogs and sorcerers. And where you think we were eating? We were eating out of the garbage and we become garbage. And Jesus went into the garbage to pull some of us out. So your salvation is more less than a miracle than mine. I was in the pit and he saved me. this stuff all her past he addressed it 
Yes, he did. You have five husbands. Yes. Had five. Yes. Past tense. Yes. And the one you have now is not even yours. Can you imagine what a questionable character that is? Just think about it. Some of us have some past that we want no one to know about. And it's not their business. But I come to tell you that, amen, on Thursday and Friday, Walmart and Kmart wasn't the only saving places. Jesus saves as well. And in the midst of this, he told her about her past. But said, look, you don't have to remain in your mess. And this is a crucial message in this. He stepped over tradition, stepped over culture, and he went to find a woman in her mess and ministered to her. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You came here just maybe, amen, to, 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 to pay your respect to the baby blessing. You just came because it's a friend and family Sunday. Amen. But Jesus is going to meet you at your well. Yes. He's going to step over your regular Sundays. And he's going to meet you at your well. And while he ministered to her. Look at this. While he ministered to her. And he told her about her past. And he said, look, this water that you're drinking is on a temporal. But if you allow me to give you my water, and I'm not sure if she think that Jesus was flirting with her. I'm not sure. But she go on the perspective and say, well, why don't you give me to drink? But it didn't become a reality until he told her about her past. Because there are some secrets that we have hold so close that not even our best friend knows. That when God reveals himself, you're going to say, this had to be the Christ. <laughs> had to be God. He ministered to her. And, and, and this is the paramount of it. After he ministered to her, he took all that mess. He put it all together. And she said, look, after you tell me all about this, give me the water that you have. He took her very mess. Took it. She looked at it. And Jesus took it. And while, amen, he took it and massaged it, he gave it back to her. And what he gave back to her was in the same mess. What he gave back to her was a message. So he took her mess and turned it into a message. And she took it to the town and said, come see a man. Some of the greatest miracles you're going to see Amen is going to come out of the mouth of the crackhead. It's going to come in and out of the mouth of the prostitute. It's going to come out of the mouth of the alcoholic. It's going to come out of the mouth, amen, of those that you rejected. It's going to come out of the mouth of those who despise. Amen. He took her mess and gave her a message. He's going to take you away and give, amen, you a wonder. is a mess and I'm going to bring this to a closure this is a paramount of this story for me that some of us is a mess and we are going day in and day out in our mess with our mess and there, there's a trail of our mess and people speak of our mess we sleep in our mess we wake up in our mess go to the well in our mess go to work in our mess but this is the year, this is the day of salvation in which Jesus is looking for you. Amen. He's going to meet you at your well. He's going to take your past. 
and the pain that you are going through, amen, and the heartbroken and the brokenness that you are going through, everything that people have done to hurt you and to despise you, he's going to take it all together, all your mess, being neglected, being rejected, being abused, being forsaken, take it all, and he's going to give you a message. Come see a man. Is this not the Christ that told me everything? The reality is that some of us are here and our life is so meshed up. And we are saying, uh uh, I'm too much in my mess for Jesus to even look on me and pardon me. But that's what he wants. That's what yes, he wants. He wants, amen, the stuff that folks neglect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he wants you. Yeah, yeah. He wants the stuff that is broken yeah, yeah, in yeah. pieces yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. and have been scattered in the garbage. Uh, That's what he wants. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. he, he wants the mess of life. Yeah, yes, yeah, he wants, yeah, amen, the person who day in and day out just look at the bottle, amen, and think this substance is going to wash. Amen, my stars away. Yeah. Those are the individuals he wants. That's me, that's me, that's me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Yeah, 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 but some yeah, of us yeah. came here thinking it was just going to be an ordinary Sunday. But Jesus said, I come looking for you. I come aiming to heal your diseases. I come to heal your very mind. I come to heal your family. I come to heal your heart. I come to heal your very soul. Jesus came looking just for you. So wherever you are, in your sickness, in, in, in your basement, in your crevices, you have eye away, hidden away, think you're going to die. But Jesus said, behold, I come on the door and I'm knocking. And if you hear the knocking on your heart door, it is Jesus that's knocking and say, I'm here to save you. I'm here, England, to give you life. I'm here to transform your life. What great a miracle. That's a look at a soul that was wasted. And the glory of God has moved on such, on such a one that they have been transformed from a waste to a wonder. Are you here today? Your life has seemed so broken up in pieces. People talk about you, people walk up on you. You do stuff, you go to your will at noonday just because of your past. But he said, I am the Lord who healeth thee. I am the Lord, the healer. I send my words to comfort thee. I am the Lord. Your heart is broken. But God is saying, I'm coming today. And I'm looking for you. Yes. You haven't gone that far that my arms cannot reach you. You haven't sinking that deep that I cannot pull you up. Your sin haven't covered you that much that I have forgotten about you. No. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it's simple to me that if it was only you alone that was alive in this world, he would have still died just for you. He loved you that much. And he's knocking at your door. And he's saying, come. Why don't you come and receive life? Why don't you come and receive life? Jesus came looking for me and what he brought with him was water because he took the water that the woman had and gave her his water which was eternal life and he said it will spring in you a well keeps springing up into everlasting life is there one we know we're going to bless the baby yes but before we bless the baby, is there one that came in here? You were broken. You felt despised. You felt rejected. You felt all alone. You felt cold. You felt that there was no one to help you.
want to hear from Jesus that's saying, it doesn't matter what you have done. He says there's still hope. Hallelujah. Thank you. And if you walk through these doors, I want you to walk through these doors believing and knowing that Jesus will save. Jesus still keeps and is still satisfied. David said, Why art thou cast out all my soul? And why art thou disquietest within me? Yes, we do feel that way sometimes. But he, amen, remembered that there is a God. And he said, I will yet therefore hope in God. I don't want you to walk through these doors and think God has forgotten about you. Even if you don't walk to this altar, right now God is troubling your heart. He's troubling your mind. He's troubling your spirit. Yes, sometimes our world seems crazy. And no one understands. But he's saying, here's life. I'm giving you life. I'm breathing upon your life. Yeah. He said, I am the good Samaritan. I came off my ass. Came off my donkey. Went down. Saw you in your brokenness. Took oil. And poured in your wound. Not only that, I brought you somewhere that was even warm and comfortable and I took the bill and I paid it and the songwriter said Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe sin has left the crimson sin and he washes white in snow Jesus came looking for me as we go through these doors, amen, I want you to take that word with you. Doesn't matter how broken you are, how despair you may feel, Jesus, the Son of God, came Thank you, Jesus. to look for me. God bless you.